Hello everyone and welcome to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 1 of the brand new color switch series on Scratch 3. Here you'll be learning to make a complete color switch game starting with the graphical interface to the endless level system and also using different obstacles. Now this game has a lot of artwork and images. Rather than going through a scratch file and downloading every single one of them new, what you can do instead is to download this particular file from the link in the description. Once you're in downloaded files, you can click on the scratch file which says start and you're ready to proceed. All right, so now let's head over to the code. I'm gonna have this game commence in a series of messages. What this would allow me to do is have more control over the game and what parts of code in different sprites I do when. So I could choose to do a bunch of code in different sprites all at once and I could choose to do a bunch of code at a separate time um, and I could sync it between the sprites and this is what makes this method pretty useful. So you can head over to the stage first and uh, we can actually start this off with a when green flag is clicked. Now when the green flag is clicked, this is the beginning of the code and I will start by broadcasting some messages. So you can see broadcast new message and the first message I'll broadcast is our thumbnail. So you can just call this message thumbnail or show thumbnail or something like this. But what this message relates to is our thumbnail showing right on the screen. And once it flickers for a while and then gets into the how to screen, we can then close the program. That's our final output. But first we need to make sure that the thumbnail is available. Now, once you're done broadcasting the thumbnail, we can broadcast another message. This time we can call it how to, and uh, I'm just gonna call this how to play. Um, now, there's actually a choice here of going between broadcast and broadcast and wait. Now, this is very crucial. You need to make sure that you use broadcast and wait, because in case you just use broadcast, then this won't give us control over the sprites doing their various codes in sync. So for example, in case we use broadcast and wait, and let's just say within our thumbnail sprite, we had a when I receive um, thumbnail, and uh, within our how to sprite, we had another when I receive thumbnail. Um, in this case, uh, what would happen is our code would first execute here, and then it would execute here in the next sprite before it goes on to the next message. Now, in case we have it as broadcast, um, instead of broadcast and wait, if we use this first way, then this is not gonna be so clear because now the computer has no idea on what to do first and what to do next. So this is a crucial distinction. Make sure you use a broadcast and wait. Now, finally, once you're done with uh, broadcasting a how to play, you can broadcast a third message. This time I'm gonna call it init. This is gonna be the point where we're gonna initialize all the sprites their clones and pretty much the other starting stuff before we um, before we start the actual game. All right, so now let's head over to the thumbnail because here we need to pick in this code. Now the purpose of the thumbnail is twofold. First of all, when the game starts, we need it to flicker, um, flicker for maybe a second or two and then hide. But also whenever we just hit the red flag while we're playing, we need to make sure that the thumbnail actually pops right in front. So it functions as, a, uh, as an actual thumbnail as well. So when we receive thumbnail, let's start it off right here. Um, when we do, it's first of all very important to make sure we're always at the front layer. So add in a go to front layer. Um, once you're done with this, you can add this block of code which says clear graphic effects. What we'll do with the thumbnail is play around with its transparency. This transparency is um, represented by something called the ghost effect. And when we increase the ghost effect all the way up to 100, this particular image is going to be completely transparent. Now what clear graphic effects is going to do is it's going to set all the effects, whether it's the color effect, the pixel effect, or the ghost effect, or any of the other effects back to their default values. Now the default value for the ghost effect is zero, which means not transparent or completely opaque. Now when the image is opaque, it's obviously going to show in front of the screen. So regardless of what our ghost value was, before you know we commence the game, it is going to reset the ghost value to zero, and that means our thumbnail is going to be visible. So that's what clear graphic effects does. Next, we need to make sure we also show the thumbnail because we will be hiding it at some point, and it's important that we show it at the beginning. Once you're done with this, you could head over to the control category and add in a wait for a time lag. 
Now I think one second works pretty good for this particular time lag, but you could play around with this. Maybe change it to 0.5 seconds, maybe change it to two seconds, or maybe even five. Um, whatever works for you regarding the game. Um, this should be pretty easy to test out once you're done with the code. All right, so now the last thing we need to do is to set up its ghost effect, because once we've done waiting, we want this to hide. Um, not really hide in the sense of hiding the sprite, but basically we need it to disappear. This is where our ghost effect comes in. And to do this, we can simply, instead of saying hide, set the ghost effect to 100. Once we do this, the sprite should disappear. So let me hit the green flag and boom, you can see that the sprite disappears and we are into our actual game itself. That's pretty cool. And once we hit the red button, you can see that our thumbnail just jumps back on. Perfect. So this is how the ghost effect works. Um, when we get into the game, all of our code applies and the ghost effect is set to 100. When we press the red flag, however, what happens is the whole program stops and when it stops, all the effects of these um, sprites set to their default values. In the ghost effect, this is going to be zero. It just basically performs this exact same function. So whenever we hit the stop key, it's gonna clear all the graphic effects in all the sprites. And in our case, that's exactly what we need. So once you're done with the thumbnail, you can move on to the next part of the code because the thumbnail is just the start. Once we have done, uh, you know, once we have passed this thumbnail, once we have gone through all of this code, we need to make sure that our how-to screen appears. So let's head there right now. When we do receive thumbnail in our how-to screen, we need to make sure we hide because our thumbnail is gonna be what's shown at first and it's gonna be pretty weird for the user if he first sees a how-to play screen before he even knows what game he's playing. So make sure you add in a hide here. And once everything is over, which is when the next message is gonna broadcast, which means that the thumbnail code is gonna finish all together, and then it's gonna head back right into the stage, and then we're gonna broadcast how to play. So when we do receive how to play this time, we're obviously not gonna hide. We'd wanna make sure that when we do receive how to play, we show ourselves. Um, it's also important to add in one more line of code, and that is to go to the back layer. This is very, very important. In case you don't add this in, this particular how-to screen is gonna be in front of the thumbnail. Now, since it's in front of the thumbnail and we click the red flag when the how-to screen is shown, then the thumbnail isn't gonna be appearing to us. The ghost effect is still gonna reset, but since it's one layer behind, we aren't gonna be able to see it. So it's very important you add in a go to back layer so that this particular how to screen is behind the thumbnail when this happens. Perfect, so once you have this in place, what you can do is have a when I receive in it because this is all we'll be doing um, when we receive how to play. It's fairly straightforward. Finally, when we receive in it, what I will do is simply hide my uh, sprite. So add in a hide and this should do the trick. So I'm gonna hit the green flag now. So the color switch, boom, switches. And then when we receive how to play, for some reason, it goes right into the next screen. Basically what happens is we broadcast it in it right after this code ended, which meant that our sprite had to hide and hence it disappeared. So that was fairly simple. And to fix that, we just need to make sure we add in a wait something like forever. So head over to control and just say wait for, I don't know, 100 seconds. This should be slow enough for the computer, you know, for me to actually prove my point. So you can now see that, well, our screen appears and there is one small problem. You can see that the hand and the ball appear even though they shouldn't be appearing. This could be fixed pretty simply. What we can do is head over to the ball and we can start this right away. So we can just say when I receive thumbnail, we can just hide all of our, uh, uh, hide this particular sprite and that's pretty much all we need to do. So we can head over to the hand as well and maybe just throw in this code right into the hand and this should work properly. So there we go. We have a when I receive um, thumbnail hide, both in the hand as well as the ball, which are the two sprites which showed. Um, later on, we'll be making sure that every single sprite has this. But since at this point, all of our other sprites are well hidden, you know, you can see all the score, high score, obstacles, color switch, and the star hidden, um, it really doesn't make much of a difference. So now when we hit the green flag, we have a thumbnail, and then we get into a how to play screen. Remember, this is gonna stay on for as long as user wants and not as I just, um, you know, coded here for 100 seconds. What I will do is have a close button right here. And once the user is done processing how to play the game, he could just click close and that's gonna enter into the main game. 
Now doing this is fairly straightforward. We can head over to the close sprite, which is what, uh, which uh, the, the function of which is what I just stated. And once again, in our close sprite, things are gonna be fairly similar, but they're gonna differ when it comes to the last message. So we can start this off with a when I receive thumbnail. And when we do receive thumbnail, just like we did for the how to play screen, for the ball and, um, and for the hand, we'll be making sure we hide. Now, once we're done hiding, it's important we need to sh uh, we show the sprite when we receive the how to play message. So you can remove the hide when we receive how to play, instead add in a show. And it's also important we go to a specific coordinate. Now, in case you downloaded the file, which I just have on my screen here, you'd have the coordinates preset up, and this is gonna be x210, y150. Once we're gone there and we've shown, we need to wait until the sprite is clicked. Now, unfortunately, if you go into sensing, there isn't something which says when, uh, you know, when the sprite is clicked. That's only available within our events. But since we're really checking an if condition here, this particular block isn't suitable. So what we can do is improvise a little bit and add in a wait until. And within this wait until, we don't have, you know, if a sprite is clicked. What we can do instead is to use two conditions combined. We can use if touching mouse pointer and we can use if mouse down. So mouse down would imply that the user is clicked and touching mouse pointer would, in, uh, would imply that the sprite is touching the mouse. So these two conditions together is going to mean that we have just closed the how to screen and we can head over into the main game. So now you can head over to operators, grab an and and just put these two conditions together within the wait until. And uh, remember, this particular code is gonna wait until this condition is met. So we're not gonna go into the init message until this condition is met. And due to this, the how to screen is gonna be showing all through the while until we close it. All right, so that's what I'll be doing in this video. Let me quickly test out my code to make sure everything is working correctly. So boom, I hit the green flag, we had the thumbnail and now the how to screen. And when we click on the close key, boom, everything disappears. That's pretty cool, but you can see that our close button didn't disappear too. So we can fix that pretty easily. We can head over to the close sprite once again. And in addition to these two messages, what we can have is a third message. And that is when we receive init, all we'll do is the same thing we do when we receive thumbnail, we just hide. So now let me test this out one more time. So let me hit the green flag and then try to close it. And there you go. Everything disappears and our program works beautifully. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.